Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we're going to do the adventure Where the Gods Dwell, the second to last one of this campaign. Woohoo! These will be the last ones we do with these two decks. So what we see up here, this is Tony's deck. I have used all 28 experience. I think the big thing I got was some switchblades, which cost me three XP, so that was six out of my nine. Uh, yeah, that was expensive. I think the other thing I did, I got momentum and uh yeah i don't know i can't remember if there's anything else i think i think that's it but super oh yeah i got the uh, 41 daringer as well so hopefully that'll be good over here for luke i actually have one unused experience but eh, i because remember i get an additional two that i can use just for a spell because of the arcane research so i grabbed two level five shrivelings that was 10 of the 11 experience I didn't have anything else that was one that I felt like was worth it, so I'm just going to leave it as is. This is what our deck will look like for the final scenario. Check the campaign log. If the investigators were carried to the Cold Waste, no. If the investigators traveled to the co Cold Waste, skip to intro 2. The white ship sails effortlessly through the ether. Along the way, it passes under archways of woven shadow over Krulian seas that glimmer in the moonlight and through vast swaths of dense mist. Eventually, you reach a continent far to the north where even your intrepid captain never ventured. Colossal creatures dwell in the dark, deep ocean, a terrible danger to any ship that dares the dreadful seas. The captain moors the flying ship over a desolate landscape of ice and snow. Several moonbeams emerge from the ship's white hull, forming a gangway to the tundra below. In the distance, through a haze of snowflakes, you can barely make out the shape of a domed building. Welcome to the accursed plateau of Lang. The elderly captain says with a hint of regret in his voice. You will find no joy or peace here, only death. Please, I must implore you once more to forsake this quest and return to fair lands. Are you sure this is where you would like to disembark? You nod. The captain sighs in reply. The white ship shall sail no more this forsaken place, for it shakes me to my core. You are on your own from here. I bid you farewell and good luck, fellow traveler. You cross over bright, vivid moonbeams down into the bleak expanse below. You will find and scale the peaks of Unknown Kadath, or you will die trying. We'll gather all the cards from these sets. We're going to put the following locations into play. The Plateau of Lang, Cold Waste, the Monastery of Lang, the Onyx Gate, and the Onyx Castle. And I'll show you how it should be set up. Each investigator begins play at the Plateau of Lang. Search, uh, uh, set each of the six Forsaken Tower locations aside out of the play. Set the following cards aside out of play. We've got the High Priest not to be described. That sounds terrible. Each of the five copies of Narothotep. Each of the four copies of the Whispering Chaos. Both copies of the Myrid Forms. And the Crawling Mist. Just a few things. And then uh, shuffle the remainder of the encounter deck. This is their suggested way of setting up the board. Here we have how the board will look on our table. Let's take a look at this location. This is the Plateau of Lang. It has three shroud, total of two clues. When an enemy attempts to spawn at an empty location, and there are no empty locations in play, I'm assuming we'll find out what that means, spawn that enemy here instead. Hmm, okay. Here we have our chaos tokens and what they do. The skull is X. X is the number of the current act. So, of course, that's only minus one right now. The cultists reveal another token. If you fail, place one doom on the current agenda. Uh, if we flip... Oh, my gosh. And we had to put one of these in our bag. If we... Oh, and you know what? Uh, Steve told me what that was and I already forgot. Oh, it's a tablet. I believe it's a tablet. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Hopefully that's right. Minus four. If you fail, choose and reveal a copy of that word in your hand. It attacks you and it's shuffled into the encounter deck. Oh boy, that's going to be fun. We're going to get those into our hand, huh? And I don't think we have any of these in our bag anymore because the black cat is no longer with us. Okay, I just looked it up. That is called the tablet and that's called the elder thing token. There we go. I'm going to say the right thing, hopefully. <laughs> We'll have Tony be our first player. I have these awesome new player mats that I've got. Uh, I have the bounty contracts set up way over here. Don't forget he has another day, another dollar, and he has charisma, so he can have one additional ally out. So he starts with a total of nine resources, you guys, nine. Okay, he's going to draw five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Let's take a look at these. We've got Leo De Luca, one of the best allies out there because he gives us an additional action. We've got a switchblade. 
We have our Twin Colt uh, 38. Awesome. We have our Elder Sign Amulet. And we have another uh, Tony's 38 Long Colt. We have both of them in our hand. Yeah, I'm keeping this whole hand. Not a question. We then have Luke over here. He already starts with two horror, so he only has seven sanity remaining. He has two arcane research and a charisma as well. He has his gate box I have over here and the dream gate that he has over here. So let's draw his five cards. One, two, three, four, five, and take a look at those. Well, the astounding revelation is terrible, so we're definitely going to discard that one and draw a new one. I like the calling in favors. I love having David Reinfeld. I like the word of protection and the shriveling. So let's just draw to replace the um, astounding revelation. Then I'll shuffle that back in. We have a six sets. I, I see, see you there, there. Playing, playing with fate, fate like it's like all it's some all sort of, of game. game. Do you Do really, you really think, think you could escape, escape my grasp? grasp. What, what makes, makes you think you are, you are the one, one in control? control? We can have seven doom on this agenda before we move to the next one. That sounds great. We have here journey through the cold waste. You've come to the land of Lang, a barren icy wasteland where you believe the peak of unknown Kadath resides. All the while, a presence taunts you, nine at your insides. It's a wordless, derisive voice that you cannot hear but feel within the confines of your mind. So we need a total of four clues to be able to move forward, seven doom, and we move to the next agenda. We're going to start off with Tony, and let's play Leo De Luca first. That costs us five of our nine resources, so that means we will have four resources left, but now we can do four actions a turn, so that wasn't even an action. Well, that's ridiculous. I really don't think I've ever had this good of a setup at the beginning of the game because I'll be able to put out both of my Tony 38s for only three resources. That's our second action. We'll still have uh, two left. That's because it says after you play Tony's 38 Long Cult, play another one from your hand at no cost. Each one only costs one hand, so we can have both of them out. They each, they each will come out with three ammo. And I've got to say, I absolutely love these tokens. Oh my gosh, they look so phenomenal on here. Look at the other side of these. Yeah, I love them. I have no idea what this scenario is going to bring. So I think for action three, we're going to generate one resource. So we have two. And then our fourth and final action, we're going to spend both of those to drop out our Elder Sign Amulet. You can see here, we can have one of these out. And that's going to give us plus four sanity. So now we're a nine and nine. We're a beast. That will end Tony's turn. Now let's go to Luke. Luke will spend all five of his resources and the first two actions to play out both David Reinfield and his leveled up six cents. David Reinfield is a little bit of a risky ally. You're going to see why. While David Reinfield has at least one doom on him, we gain plus one willpower, which would push us up to five, which is great. However, don't forget during the mythos phase, we check to see all the doom on the table if it's going to advance the agenda. So I've got to be careful about how much doom I put on him. We can, as a free action, we're going to exhaust him and then we can place one, uh, place one doom on him like I did and then gain one resource for each doom that's on him. So I will gain one resource. I didn't have any, so now I'll gain one, but now we have one doom out. We can then use our sixth sense for our third and final action. We can investigate using our willpower, which is now five, and we get plus two, so it's a seven. This is a test of seven to three. Let's see what we get. We get a minus one. That means we've collected our first clue, but that will end this turn. There are no enemies on the board, so we'll jump right to the upkeep phase. We'll reset Tony here, and then we will each draw a card and generate a resource. That means Tony will have one and we'll have Luke gaining his second resource. Then we'll each draw a card and we have a ward of protection and extra ammunition. We'll move to that mythos phase. We'll place one doom here. We look at all the doom out on the table. There's a total of two, one from David and one from here, so not seven. So then we'll simply move to drawing an encounter card per player, starting with Tony. Tony will draw the first encounter card and we have the ancient evils. I hate this card. Place one doom on the current agenda. Yeah, no, we have Luke here. Luke has the ward of protection. This is the leveled up one. 
Play when invest and when an investigator at your location draws a non-weakness treachery card. So we're going to spend one re uh, resource here. So we're back down to one. Cancel the card's revelation effect, then take one horror. That's going to put us up to three total horror. Totally worth it, though. I don't want to deal with that. So we will discard this. Then, uh, let's see. Luke will draw an enemy. Uh, pray. Most cards in hand. We're actually... Oh, no. You know what? Luke definitely has three cards compared to the two that Tony has. So that means he is going to be engaged by Liar with No Face. It is a hunter. When Liar with No Face attacks you, if Whispering Chaos is in your hand, oh boy, I'm assuming we're going to get these things in our hand, reveal it. Liar with No Face deals plus two damage for this attack. Boy, four health. Uh, we only have to do a three combat or higher to hit it, though. So that shouldn't be terrible for Tony. Of course, don't forget our bounty contracts for Tony. After an enemy enters play, we're going to move these two bounties onto that liar with no face. Who wants to have a liar with no face? Let's destroy that thing. And when we do, if we defeat that enemy with one or more bounties on it, we can actually turn those bounties into resources. Are you ready for Tony to be somewhat ridiculous? I am. So we're going to move to that investigator phase. Tony's going to go first. You may take an additional action during your turn, which can only be used to engage, fight an enemy with one or more bounties on it. Well, this one's got two bounties on it. So we're going to fight it. We're not even going to engage it because I'm just going to hope that I'm not going to shoot Luke. If I shoot Luke, this could be bad. Uh, I'm going to not engage it. I'm just going to attack it. That's not even an action. We then still have uh, Leo out here for one regular additional action. So yeah, we have five actions this turn. I've placed the enemy here just so you can see it, but remember, it's engaged with Luke. So we're at a five compared to the three that's here. We'll spend one ammo. This ammo says you get plus one for each bounty on the attacked enemy. So we're actually at seven total fight compared to the three that's here. I will put two here. We still have two bullets left. Seven to three. The first one that we draw is a minus one. That means we will deal plus one damage so we're going to deal two damage to that liar with no face this means we only need to do that one more time to take it out so let's use a second bullet and this is our first of four actions right now because we got a free fight action there we'll attack we get a zero are you serious so that means we definitely take it out which means we'll gain these two as resources and the Tony's 38 Long Cult states, if this attack defeats an enemy with one or more bounties on it, place one bounty on the bounty contracts. So we get one of those back. We're going to generate two resources. And we destroyed that thing. That was awesome. And that was two out of our five actions. We cleared Luke's way to obtain that clue. So I think our third action and the only place we can go is the Cold Waste. Let's see what that's all about. The Cold Waste only has a two shroud value. That's not bad. After you reveal one of these tokens while investigating here, though, you must either take one damage or lose an action. Well, I think we can take a damage. We are at a three, actually. So why don't we give this a shot? So we have two more actions. Let's use one to investigate. Come on, be a number. Be a number. Oh, it's a plus one. I'll take that. So that gains us one of these clues. And then let's pick this back up. And then let's see what we can do for our final one. We'll draw a minus four. So that's 100% a of fail, but we don't have to take a damage because that wasn't one of the bad tokens, one of these ones. For Luke's turn, let's exhaust David. Let's add another doom and then generate two more resources. That puts us up to three beautiful resources. Our first action, we'll use the sixth sense and try and investigate. We're at a seven. Oh, the cultist means we have to reveal another token. We'll reveal this one, a minus one. We're definitely good to go to collect that clue. We have three out of the four clues we need. That should mean we can move to the cold waste for action two. And action three, let's investigate again. This is now seven to a two. I will take that. We have a minus one and still none, none of these. That's amazing. We'll collect this clue. We now have four clues. We can advance the act. Three clues from Luke, one clue from Tony. Let's flip our act card. 
Traversing the wastes of Lang is no easy task. The cold bites at your skin and the bitter winds lash against your face. Even if you encounter no nameless monsters, the land itself may still yet claim your life. You try desperately to stay warm, but there is no refuge in this ice desolation. Exhausted, you collapse into a nearby snowdrift. To your surprise, you feel hard stone thrust into your ribcage. The pain shocks you out of your innervation, and you brush aside the snow to examine what it hides. Eventually, you uncover a curious stone idol in the shape of a horned creature, which glows and vibrates with faint energy. In the distance, you hear a stone slab shifting in the snow. Reveal the Monastery of Lang, spawn the set-aside high priest not to be described enemy in the Monastery of Lang. I hadn't even shown this to you yet because we hadn't gotten there. The Monastery of Lang, it says here the door of the monastery is sealed shut. You cannot enter the Monastery of Lang. Well, we're going to flip it over because we can now. This location has four clues on it. The investigators at the monastery can spend two clues as a group. Remember that the investigators maneuvered the priest closer. Hmm, okay. Look at this high priest not to be described. It is 5 for combat, 6 health, 3 total agility cost if we try and uh, basically elude it. Uh, it is alert, massive, so that means it's engaged with everyone that's in this space, and it does retaliate. Retaliate means that if you fail when you try to attack it, normally enemies don't attack you back except for during the enemy phase. Retaliate means it'll attack you back every time you fail. However, this enemy cannot make attacks of opportunity, so never mind. It will not make attacks of opportunity if you move away from it. It also has an action. If this enemy is exhausted, spend two clues. Remember that you stunned the priest until the end of the scenario this enemy gets minus three fight. Hmm, makes only a two. Uh, well, I'm definitely going to put three bounties on this. I kind of feel like I'm just going to have Tony go in here and kill this thing. <laughs> the one good thing is, is this is not going to move out of the monastery. It's not a hunter, so you don't have to worry about it immediately engaging us and dealing both of us damage. Just so you know, the alert keyword means after you fail a skill test when trying to evade the enemy, that enemy performs an attack against the evading investigator. And this, of course, does not exhaust the enemy, just like retaliate. So if you either try and attack it and fail, or you try and evade it and fail, it's going to attack you back. That was our three actions for the turn. We're each going to generate one resource that will give the fourth one to Luke and the fourth one to Tony, actually. We both have generated a bunch of resources. We'll each draw a card, and we have Randolph Carter and Eureka. During the enemy phase, this enemy won't move. It'll just stand here, and I'm realizing I didn't read the next act cards. We don't know what we're doing. Let's read that quick. Inside the domed structure is a raised dais. Upon it sits a lumpish figure robed in yellow silk, a mask covering its face. My master has plans for you. It draws. Now step forward and receive my gift. You shake your head. You've seen this sort of disguise before, and you know what sort of creature this priest truly is. We can spend an action. If an investigator maneuvered the priest closer, and an investigator stunned the priest, defeat the high priest not to be described. Yeah, I think we're just going to blow this thing up. We're just going to attack it. <laughs> Objective. If the high priest not to be described is defeated, we can advance. Going back to the mythos phase, we'll place our second doom here. That's four doom out. I've got to be careful with David. Uh, now let's draw our encounter cards. Our first card is for Tony, and he has somophobia. Oh, that sounds terrible. Test willpower five. Yeah, his willpower is two. For each point you fail by, take one horror to a maximum of three horror. For the purpose of counting icons committed to the skill test, any of these symbols count as one, and the correct symbols count as two. I think I'm just going to have to soak this. I don't see us getting enough icons without having to discard too many good cards. So we're just going to draw getting a minus two. Our willpower is zero. The max amount we can take is three horror. We're, we're going to take three horror. Ouch. Well, then get rid of this terrible card, and let's draw our next one, and we have Law of Yagarath. This is Peril and Hidden, and this is for Luke. Uh, secretly add this card to your hand. You cannot play cards or commit cards to skill tests with an odd number of words in their title. A word is any text separated by spaces. Discard a player card with an even number of words in the title from your hand, and then you can discard this card. Wow! 
let's go ahead and start off with Tony this time. We're going to spend our first action to put out Randolph Carter. He costs us three out of the four of our resources, but the nice thing is we get plus one to our attack. And if we reveal that terrible stone tablet symbol, uh, we get to draw two cards, which I like. Action two, we can see that these two are connected. We are going to move in with that high priest. We aren't engaging it because it is engaged with everyone since it's massive. And let's see if we can attack this thing. We'll do our free attack with our Tony's 38 Long Colt because it does have bounties on it. So we are at a total of 5 plus 1, which is 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 to a 5. Let's reveal this one. Minus 2. Uh, 9, 8, 7. We're good. That will deal 2 damage. Awesome. So that's 2 out of the 6. We will spend a second one here. So 1, 2, and that is our what third action yeah we should be able to take this out as long as we uh don't fail at any of these a minus four even with the minus four i think we're okay thank goodness because we get plus three from this so three plus one which is four plus another five which is nine <gasps> nine minus four is five that's two more damage this is at four Oh my gosh. So the only way we can actually fail is if we get the fail token right now, which I will take. Let's do our final draw. And what do we have? We have another minus four. Uh, that minus four will still work. That means we've taken out this guy, the high priest not to be named. We'll also gain three resources because of the bounties. And since we did that with our long Colt 38, we'll gain one of our bounties back. Also, don't forget he is a victory card, so he will not go into the discard pile. I really kind of love this because I'm picturing this priest coming in all eerie deary and trying to scare us. And Tony just goes, no, pulls out his guns, boom, 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 takes him out. No problem. The guy wasn't ready for it. He thought he was going to scare him. No, nah, didn't scare him one bit. If you defeated the high priest not to be described with damage, read the following. As you strike it down, the creature spits foul curses at you in tongues that can scarcely be described. Its last breath is filled with hate. Eh, whatever. Uh, if you defeated the high priest uh, using the abilities, no. No matter what, or no matter how you defeated it, read the following. With the monster dispatched, you can explore its monastery in relative peace. Along the ruined walls of the stone building, tapestries depict the history of this land. A history of blood and suffering that you have no desire to remember when this is all said and done. Great snow-capped peaks loom over each of these scenes. In just one of them, a castle is woven in black thread. Beyond the Dreams you believe that Kadath is the highest peak far to the north, but in order to open the gates leading to that forsaken land, you must prove that it exists. If each investigator is at the onyx gates and no clues are there, we can advance. Well, I'm sure it's probably going to bite me in the butt that I have not found any of these clues here, but I don't see any reason to bring Luke over here and gain these clues unless something, I'm missing something. I don't see anything. I think the benefit would have been collecting these clues to take that guy out that Tony just went and shot up like nobody's business. Luke, however, is in a bit of a conundrum. Look at his cards. Calling in favors, that's an odd number of words. Shriveling, odd number. Ward of protection, odd number. Eureka, odd number. And because of this blasted thing, we can't play any of our cards uh, that have an odd number of cards in it. So, or odd number of words in it. So I'm thinking, do I want to do an action to draw a card? Why I'm nervous is I was planning on using calling in favors to get rid of David uh, Reinfeld, who has all of that doom, but we can't do that now because of this card. See, I'm going to spend one action because I feel like we're doing pretty well. I'm going to spend an action and flip over this card. Drawn to the flame. One, two. That has four. That is four words. Beautiful. So action one was to do that. Action two, then, we're going to discard a player card with an even number of words in its title, and we can get rid of this card. <laughs> Yeah, that's action two. We'll then exhaust David Reinfeld, generate another Doom, but that's going to generate three more resources. That means we have uh, three, six, seven resources. However, then for our final action, because yeah, that's all we can do, uh, we are going to do calling in favors. Choose an ally asset you control and return it to your hand. Then search the top nine cards of your deck for an ally asset and play it, reducing its cost by X. 
x is the cost of the ally you returned to your hand. So we can reduce its cost by two. That also means we can remove all of this doom. Oh, that feels a lot better. I'm not worried about that. We'll put this into our hand and let's draw nine or reveal nine cards. We're looking for a couple different things when we do this. First of all, we're looking for an ally. Oh, we could put out David again, actually. Ah, oh, beautiful. I was hoping we'd see this. So this says, um, Astounding Revelation cannot be played. But when you search your deck and Astounding Revelation is among the search cards, discard it to either gain two resources or place one secret on an asset, asset that you control. Well, I don't have anything to be placing secrets yet. So I do think I'll just generate two more resources. That's going to give us a total of nine resources. Boy, we could play any card we want. Um, Mr. Rook is also here. I think I'm going to go Mr. Rook for our ally. And uh, that is because he does use secrets. We can exhaust Mr. Rook and spend one secret. Search the top three, six, or nine cards from your deck for any card and draw it. If at least one weakness is among the searched cards, draw one of them as well and then shuffle the deck. So we'll put him out. We have three secrets on Mr. Rook. Let's go ahead and exhaust him. It's a free action to do this. I will then look at the top. Let's do... Let's just do six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's look at the top six cards. Hopefully I don't have a weakness in here. Bummer, I do. Oh, so I have our narcolepsy. And I played this wrong the last time I pulled this out. We have to have another investigator do the action on here to wake up. I can't just do the action. So I'm going to put this out. That means Tony's going to need to wake us up from our narcolepsy. However, we can also put one of these cards into play. I'm definitely going to put the right of seeking. And it's not into play. It's in our hand. We're going to put a right of seeking into our hand. And did you see this? We have another astounding revelation. And I'm going to discard that to then place a secret back out on Mr. Rook. So Mr. Rook has three secrets. There are no enemies out on the table, so we'll each generate one resource. That's 10 for Luke, and that will be 5 for Tony. <laughs> and then we're each going to draw a card. Let's see, we get David Reinfeld, and we have Swift Reflexes for Tony. Going to the Mythos phase, our third Doom is placed. We're still definitely good. Let's draw our encounter cards. Our first card will be for Tony. Tony has Whispers of Hypnos. I remember this one. We have to choose a skill and all investigators get minus two for that. We're definitely going to choose Agility. We never run away. We just blow things up. Come on. Uh, then the second one, this is for Luke. We have another Peril and Hidden. Secretly add this card to your hand. You cannot commit more than one card to skill test each round. Hmm. Discard Restless Journey and test <laughs> our Agility, which right now is uh, one. <laughs> If you fail, place one Doom on the current agenda. This effect can cause the current agenda to advance. And we'll probably just keep this in our hand for a bit. We'll start this round with Tony. He's going to have to go and shake Luke awake. Somehow he fell asleep yet again. Yet again. But before we do that, we are going to spend two of our five precious resources. And we're going to put out three more ammunition. And we're going to drop that onto our Tony's 38 Long Colt. This has got to be one of the best setups I've ever had in this game with Tony. I love it. That was action one. Action two, we're going to move to the cold waste. Action three, we're going to shake Luke awake. Luke, wake up. Why are you falling asleep? Look at what I've done. I've taken out this huge guy. And what have you done? Fallen asleep in the waste. Is that, was the snow too cold? <laughs> We've got two more, uh, actually one more action. We need to reveal the onyx gates and empty it out of clues. And you can see here we have the onyx castle. The way to the onyx castle is hidden. You cannot enter the onyx castle. So uh, yeah, we're just going to have to push ourselves through this. Let's reveal it. The onyx gates has one shroud and 12 total clues. Holy moly. Uh, however, it says the onyx gate gets plus two shrouds. So it's actually a three shroud location. After Onyx Gates is revealed, check the campaign log and remove one clue from this for each tally mark uh, recorded next to the evidence of Kadath. And I'm just going to say, oh, seriously, we have evidence of Kadath as a total of 12. 5 plus 5 plus 2. So that means all the clues are gone. So we've already obtained all the clues. This must mean that Tony knows exactly where Kadath is. However, we're not able to advance until Luke comes with us. So we woke Luke up in the cold waste. We've told him to come to the Onyx Gate with us. So his first action, we're going to move here as well. If each investigator is at the Onyx Gates and no clues are on it, advance. 
And here we have where the gods dwell. We have found Kadath. <laughs> that was almost anticlimactic. I thought it was going to be a little harder, but I guess not. Read scenario interlude grand design in the campaign guide. Then advance to act 4A Truth and Lies. Higher and higher, you scale the mountains far to the north. Pale light shines from atop a great black peak piercing the vibrant firmament, and you know that you approach the end of your quest. You spend untold hours ascending the snow-covered slopes until finally you reach the forbidden steps leading to the castle's great hall. The castle stands astride a precipice that overlooks the entire continent and the ocean beyond. It is a majestic sight. Above, countless tenebrious towers loom, swathed in a vortex of snow and hail. You break a trail through the crusted snow before the castle, and it soon gives way to the smooth, polished onyx. The biting wind quiets to a whistle. You are bathed in a prodigious darkness that fills the vast space. Soon there's nothing but echoing of your footsteps in the onyx floor and the quiet, lonely stillness of the great hall. Though you have crossed no doorway, you realize now where you stand, inside the halls of the Great Ones. You expected to be met by guards, servants of the gods, or perhaps even those powerful beings themselves, but you're met only by loneliness and foreboding as chilling as the piercing winds outside. You continue forward until at last you reach the end of the hall. Here, flanked by smooth onyx pillars, you find nothing. There are no gods here. This place is long abandoned. Virgil is agape. I... I don't understand. Reveal the onyx castle and place each investigator in the Great Hall on its revealed side. Remove each location other than the Great Hall from the game. Check the campaign log. If Randolph survived the voyage, proceed to Grand Hall 2. If Randolph did not, uh, skip to Grand Design 3. Randolph certainly survived. Heck, he's out there with Tony right now. You turn to Randolph for answers. He has been your guide through all of this madness. Surely he will know what is going on. Finally, he says, gazing upon the hall with wide eyes. We have reached the halls of the Great Ones, upon whom it's unlawful for mortals to look. We knew it was forbidden, yet here we are, our quest complete. He turns to Virgil. Was it worth it, sir? Have you found the evidence you seek? Virgil takes a step back. What do you want about, Randolph? Was this not your idea? You are the one who led us on this quest to begin with. Randolph smiles and places a hand on Virgil's shoulders. Yes, I am, but I am not Randolph Carter. He pulls back his other arm and before you can react, drives a razor-sharp blade of onyx through Virgil Gray's chest. Virgil's corpse slides to the polished floor, eyes forever frozen in tragic shock. I told you guys that he was bad. The being that was never Randolph Carter turns towards you, its shadow shifting into myriad shapes as it stretches across the ground. Behold! Its many voices growl. Your just reward! If an investigator's deck contains Randolph Carter, of course, Tony has him out right now, uh, remove him from that deck for the remainder of the campaign. It appears he's the expert dreamer we didn't want. If the black cat is at your side, no, he's definitely not. He's with Joe and Patrice. We sent him over, the, over there. Otherwise, skip to Grand Design 5. The crawling chaos splits into a hundred thousand shadows and vanishes into the cold, dank air. Oh, I don't even want to breathe. Randomly choose one plus two, which is a total of three, copies of the set-aside Narlothotep enemy without looking at them and shuffle them into the encounter deck. Remove each other copy from the game. Shuffle the set-aside Crawling Mist and each set-aside copy of the Myrid Forms and Whispering Chaos into the encounter deck along with the encounter discard pile. <laughs> Oh boy. Shuffle these set aside Forsaken Tower locations and choose four at random to put into play. These locations should surround the Great Hall, one in each of the four carnal directions, north, east, south, and west. See the diagram on the next page. Until the end of the scenario, each Forsaken Tower is referred to by its position relative to the Great Hall. We will set up the board like so. All of our locations set up the four random Forsaken Towers. I've shuffled everything into the encounter deck. Let's check out the Great Hall. 
The hall is connected to all Forsaken Towers. We have an action here. Choose another investigator at your location. Add a hidden card in your hand to that chosen investigator's hand. Oh, that's actually amazing. I was just thinking about how we were going to deal with that. So I might have to bring ourselves back there to give each other enemies. AKA, I'm just thinking of Luke. Luke taking out enemies, unless he gets shriveling out, is going to be tough. Beware, for I am the one who has trapped you here, and you shall never leave. Your dreams are forever mine. <laughs> we can use an action to spend one clue. Look at the top three cards of the encounter deck, draw each of those cards with the hidden keyword, and discard the rest. Our objective is to find and expose the Narothlatep true form by adding copies of the Narothlatep to the victory display. If 1 plus 2, which is 3 copies, are in the victory display, we can advance. Now remember, Luke has only done one action. He moved from the Cold Waste onto the Onyx Gates, so he still has two actions left. What do you say for one of the actions? Let's go to this Forsaken Lair. This Forsaken Tower states you cannot use this location's action ability unless another card explicitly allows you to do so. Huh. Okay, we won't even read it right now. Uh, we have one more action that we can do. I think we're going to spend three resources because I have it in my hand. Let's put out this powered up shriveling. So that's going to come out with four charges and we can use it to fight. And that's going to um, use our willpower with a plus three. So we're going to use three. We still have three, six, seven resources left. I'm realizing I just threw my three horror for Tony out on the table. I really should have placed it onto my Elder Sign amulet. That's the whole reason I have it here. So this has three horror on it, so Tony himself doesn't have any. We're also going to exhaust Mr. Rook, spending one of our uh, secrets here. Let's just reveal three cards this time. Our top three cards of our deck, and we can put one into our hand. Oh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to put the four cups. I need something to boost up our willpower. We'll skip the enemy phase, moving to the upkeep phase, each of us generating a resource. That'll be four for Tony and three, six, seven, eight for Luke. Wow, that's so many. We're each going to draw a card. Tony draws the 41 Derringer. And Luke, let's see, what do you get? You're going to gain the Pathfinder. Cool. Moving to that Mythos phase, we'll place our fourth Doom on here and let's draw our encounter cards. We'll now draw our encounter cards, starting with Tony. Tony gets Whispering Chaos South. It's Peril and Hidden. Secretly add this card to your hand. While this card is in your hand, you may activate the ability on the Southern Tower. If you reveal this card from your hand, uh, if the ability on the Southern Tower resolves successfully, discard this card. If it fails, sh uh, shuffle this card back into the encounter deck. Ah, so that's how we can activate the abilities on these locations. Okay, Luke gains Abandoned by Gods. It's a curse. We have to test our willpower three. For each point you fail, you must choose a different number between zero and four. Each player must discard each event and asset from their hand with a printed resource cost equal to that chosen number. <laughs> okay, our willpower is only four. I don't have any great cards to be able to help with this test, so I think I'm just going to take it. And we get a plus one, so that's a five, so we're good. We don't have to worry about that one. Luke will start us off this round. He's going to spend his first action using six cents. His willpower is four. He's going to add two to that. So it's a six to a three. We're going to try and collect one of those clues. We get a skull. Skull is the act, which is four. So six, five, four, three, two. We just failed at that. Wow, that was terrible. Okay, our second one. Oh, we could use, yeah, we could use an adjacent location's shroud value, but that's still a three. So still a failure. Because we failed at that, let's go ahead and play four of cups. That's going to cost us three resources. We still have three, four, five out. That's going to gain us one additional willpower. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Let's try this again, shall we? So we'll draw from here. We're now at a four plus one, which is five plus two is seven, seven. And we got a minus two. That's five for our third action. We've collected one clue. Tony still has his four actions. First one, let's go to the Forsaken Tower. This has the same ability as the other Forsaken Tower. However, we do have the one or the card that lets us use the ability of this location. It says, fight, choose, and reveal a copy of the Narothotep from your hand and fight it as if it was at your location. Oh, using your willpower instead of your combat. <laughs> we don't want to do that. Uh, so I think the only other thing we're going to do, we've got three actions. Should we try and just see if we can get some of these clues? 
Our intelligence is three, so why the heck not? Action two, we'll do this, that's a zero. We got one, awesome. Action three, let's spend this clue to look at the top three cards of the encounter deck, draw each of those cards with the hidden keyword and discard the others. So our first one is a hidden Neuralithotep. Awesome. Uh, it says here, secretly add Neuralithotep to your hand if you speak of this card while it's in your hand and unrevealed, you're driven insane. <laughs> okay, I shall not speak of it, uh, even though I just told you about it. Shh, don't tell the other self that. Our second card, we can just discard it. Come on, be another one, be another one. No, it's just deep slumber. We can discard that one. I'm just going to say it now. I do think this scenario would be much better uh, cooperative instead of solo because I can't not know what's in my other player's hands. And so I can optimize this way better <laughs> because I think so. We did action one to move here. Action two, we found that clue. Action three, we did that. Action four, we're going to come back to here knowing that we can give cards from our hand over to Luke and Luke can come down here. He's got better willpower and he can fight one of the, the Narlothotep that's in our hand. There are no enemies on the board, so we will move to the upkeep phase. We have a total of six resources here for Luke and five resources for Tony. Tony will draw contraband, which is awesome. And we have for Luke, he's going to draw another Mr. Rook. We'll place our fifth doom here, two more, and we're going to finally move the agenda. And not that I'm sad that it's been taking this long. <laughs> our first card draw will be for Tony. Tony has the Whispers of Hypnos, we're definitely doing Agility, we're both at minus two Agility, and we have the Ancient Evils of Omen, no, no, no. I still have that Ward of Protection, I can use that for Luke, that will spend one of his resources, he'll go back down to only five instead of six, he'll take another Horror, that is his fourth Horror, but remember he has nine Sanity, so he's doing alright, and then we're not placing another Doom, we're just gonna keep pushing that along. <laughs> Moving to Tony's turn, he's going to spend two actions and give both of these cards over to Luke, so Luke can hopefully take out that Narlothotep. Action three, let's move over here to this Forsaken Tower. Oh, this is a five for Shroud? Bummer. He's not going to be able to do anything there. It has the same effects uh, as the other ones where we can't do this. Oh, it's an Investigate. Uh, he has one more action. He's just going to move back to the center area because he's not going to be able to do anything here. Or you know what? Let's stay there and we'll use four out of our five resources to play contraband and double the amount of ammo on one of our assets. Just in case we ever get to shoot something again, we're ready. Luke is going to use three resources to play Pathfinder out. He has two resources left. We can now exhaust this to be able to move, as long as you're not engaged, to uh, an adjacent location. We still have two actions left. So what we can do is when this card is in your hand, you may activate the ability of the Southern Tower if you reveal this card. So we can fight, choose and reveal a copy of the Narothotep from your hand and fight it as if you were at, uh, as if it was at this location using your willpower. So our willpower right now is four plus one, which is five. And we only need a two or higher to succeed at this. If you succeed, add this copy of the Narlothotep to the victory display. If you fail, the Narlothotep attacks you and is shuffled into the encounter deck. That is so cool and so annoying. So we're at five and we're going to draw this one. That's a minus two. That's five minus two is three. That's our first one in the victory display. That also means we can discard this card from our hand. Then I think our third action will simply be to try and collect that clue. So we are going to use the sixth sense. We're uh, using a total willpower of four plus one, which is five plus two, which is uh, seven. Seven, and we just failed. <laughs> we can't find a thing. I'm still really glad I showed that now or revealed that now, not when I was dealing with the Narlothotep. There are no enemies out on the board. I'm not sure if we're going to see many enemies. We're going to move to the upkeep phase. Three resources for Luke, and we'll have two for Tony. Luke will draw a card, and he gets another shriveling. And Tony will draw a card, and he gets the another 41 Daringer. I'm looking for something to help with his willpower. Our sixth doom, though, has been placed. Next turn, we're going to move the agenda forward. I'm not looking forward to that. 
Tony will draw his first card, and he has another Nerlotha tapped. Peril hidden alert. He's going to add this to his hand. He can't talk about it. That means for Luke, all he's going to do is have the Dreamer's Curse. Test willpower 5, where our willpower right now is 5. Do I want to discard anything to add to that? Well, I can only discard one card because of this Restless Journey. So I'm going to discard Mr. Rook. That will then mean we're at 6. Oh man, 6 to 5. This is not going to be good. Let's reveal one. And we have a minus 2. That means for each point that you fail by, which is 1, we're going to take 1 damage to a maximum of 3. So we're going to take 1. We only have 4 health remaining. I don't really think I have much healing here. So this is going to be interesting. Here we go, Luke. I believe in you. This is a willpower test of 7 to 2 because of our 6 cents. And we reveal a plus 1. That means we're definitely gaining this clue. We'll spend one of those clues to reveal the top three cards and any hidden cards go into our hand. Oh, we have the Whispering Chaos West. So that means we need to go to the West spot. Our second one is a Deep Slumber. Our third one, oh my gosh. Secretly add this to your hand. You cannot commit cards to skill tests with an odd number of total skill icons on them. <sighs> oh, these cards are so insane. Well, at this point, why the heck not? Third action, let's just fill up our hands with terrible encounter cards. Uh, we have uh, this one we can discard. It is not a hidden. This one is hidden. This is another Narlotha tapped. I think, is that our third one? We need three total ones. Not that I should know, but we do know that that is our third one. That's awesome. Okay, Ancient Evils is our third one. We can discard that. Tony will go next. There's no way he's getting five for total investigation. So he's simply going to move one, two. Let's check this one out. This is what I'm talking about. Only two shroud. I think I can handle that. We've got two more actions. Let's try it. Our total uh, intellect is three. So we'll try this as a minus two. So that's a failure. We can do it with one more action. Come on. Come on, Tony. You've got this. You have got this. Let's see. That's a plus one. Yay. He gets one of them. Still no enemies out. We'll each generate a resource. That will be the fourth one for Luke. And Tony will gain his third one. We'll then draw cards for Luke. Luke has the Astounding Revelation, which is a terrible card. And for Tony, Tony has another Elder Sign Amulet. That'll be the seventh doom placed here, so let's flip this card. Do not, not try, try to run, run now. You are mine, and you will never, ever wake up. <laughs> if it is Act 4, which yes it is, place clues on each Forsaken Tower location until it has its clues equal to its clue value. Okay, so we're just going to place out a couple of them. Reveal each copy of a Narloth attempt in each investigator's hand. Each investigator who did not reveal a copy must either take one damage or one horror. For each copy of the Narloth attempt revealed by an investigator, that investigator must choose. Have it immediately attack that investigator and it's shuffled into the encounter deck, or the Narloth attempt immediately attacks that investigator three times and is returned to that investigator's hand. Three times? Well, Luke has this Narlotha tapped, so he'll have this one attack him three times. That gives him three more sanity damage, or horror. Three, six, seven. He's two horror away from being killed. Tony is also going to have this Narlotha tapped attack him three times. One will go on to his Elder Sign amulet, destroying it, and then two more on him. So he has two sanity damage, or, or horror damage, with a total of three sanity left. The Shapes of Chaos. Why do you fight? Why do you flee? I am your future. I am your fate. Another mask for my collection. Another corpse for me to wear. <laughs> this only needs five total doom. Oh boy. The first encounter card we have is for Tony. Tony gets the Whispering Chaos East. Okay, cool. We'll put that into his hand. And then Luke will have the Law of Your Goth. Uh, this one is another one that goes to his, into his hand. How many does he have in his hand? One, two, three, four. That'll be five in his hand. <laughs> you know what? I think I needed to discard some cards. I can only have eight cards in hand, so I should have discarded these two. And this is going to be our fifth one in our hand. Uh, this says you cannot play cards or trigger abilities on player cards with an odd printed resource cost. I just, what, really? Really? He's not going to be able to do anything. 
we're going to start with Luke and we're going to take care of some of these cards in our hand because it's getting ridiculous. We're going to do this restless journey. It's a free action. We're going to discard this and test our agility three. Where our agility is three, uh, I'm going to discard nothing because we're probably just going to fail this. If we do, we have to place one doom on the agenda. Uh, so we're going to get a minus two, which is a total fail, but at least we get this out of our hand. Is that good? No, but at least we have it out of our hand and that wasn't an action. We are then going to get rid of the Law of Your Goth, discard a player card with an even printed resource from your hand to discard this. So our second David Rhinefield is gone, but that means so is this card. We've still only done one action. Let's activate Mr. Rook. Let's look at the top six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six cards. We can put one of them into our hand. Uh, okay, thank goodness. I need one that has two skill icons. Let's definitely do this Uncage the Soul. I'll put that into my hand. And of course, that spent one of these secrets, so I'll remove that from here. We're then going to do action two, getting rid of this. Discard a player card with an even number of total skill icons. So we're going to discard this one to get rid of this card in our hand. That's action two. We're then going to exhaust the Pathfinder so we can move for free. That'll allow us to move to the Great Hall, and we still have one more action, so we're going to move here at the Forsaken Tower. I believe that's the west side, and that's what we have. We have the west side card. Okay, this is good. Tony needs to make sure he does not die. So the first thing he's going to do is spend two out of his three resources going down to one. He's got his Elder Sign Amulet back out. Good thing we had two of those. Tony's second and third action, he's going to move to the Forsaken Tower. And action four, we have our Whispering Chaos card here so we can activate the East Tower's effect. We can fight, choose and reveal a copy of the Narlothotep from your hand and fight it as if you were at this location. If you succeed, add the copy of the Narlothotep to the victory display. If not, shuffle it into the encounter deck. I'm pretty sure because I'm doing a fight action on the card, I can't use my weapons. I've just got to use my fight value. I don't know if that's right, but we're at a five to a three. I am definitely going to discard. I have a 41 Derringer, so that'll get us to a six to a three. And let's do the switchblade. So that's a seven to a three, seven to a three. So even that minus four will be okay. Uh, let's draw this one. It's a minus one. That means we succeeded. That's our second out of three that we have pushed out of here. <laughs> Take that. We'll end our turn yet again. No enemies out. We will generate our second resource for Tony and our fifth resource for Luke. Gosh, Luke is still swimming in resources. Luke is going to draw. I really don't want to draw my weakness. Okay, it's not. It's knowledge is power. My weakness could be uh, detrimental to us, you guys. I could take two horror with it, and uh, that would kill me. So we've got to be careful. Tony will gain the Sour Mash. Cool. We'll place that second Doom. Three more, and we flip this. We'll draw our first encounter card for Tony. Tony has an enemy. Oh my gosh, that feels really good. We have the liar with no face. That will immediately engage him. Normally it would prey the most cards in hand, but he's the only one at that location, so he'll immediately be engaged with him. I'm going to put uh, just one bounty on him, I think, and that's cool. We'll then move to Luke. Luke has ancient evils. No, not more doom. Did you know there's only three cards of that in the entire set? And I always seem to freaking draw it. And that loses, or we lose an entire round because of that. Well, here we go. During the investigation phase, let's see if we can capture that final Narlothotep, however you say that. <laughs> we have our Whispering Chaos West, so we can activate the av ability here. Investigate, choose, and reveal a copy of the Narlothotep from your hand for this investigation. This location shroud is equal to the Narlothotep's printed health. So we have a total of a five here for our test. Our intellect is only three. So what I'm going to do is unload my hand, uh, four, five, six. That will give us six for our total intellect. Can I do anything else? I should have done this first. Pretend I did. This is the hard part about recording. <laughs> I'm going to spend this clue or this secret to reveal the top three cards. I'm just looking for any more of those intellect symbols. So let's see. I've got two on this one. Beautiful. So we'll put this one into our hand. We will then spend that, which gives us a total of five intellect here, plus the three that we have. That's a total of eight. 
eight and we need a five. Let's see, we get a minus one, four, we're good. We have now exposed our third Narlothotept. Awesome, we can advance. Check the campaign log. If the black cat knows the truth and the investigators possess the silver key. We only possess the silver key. I don't see anything about the black cat knowing the truth. So then we just proceed to our one. The presence taunting your mind retreats into the shadows and you are left once again with an overwhelming sense of loneliness. The vast halls of the Onyx Castle are evidenced of nothing but despair and sorrow. Whatever gods once inhibited this place left long ago. Coming here was indeed folly. You carry Virgil's corpse out into the snowy peaks of Kadath and bury him outside the castle. You still do not understand what the being known as Narlothotep wanted with him or with you, but at least now you can leave the dreamlands behind, if that is truly what you wish to do. In the campaign log, we're going to record the dreamers escaped from Narlothotep's grasp. Each investigator earns experience. I don't know why that matters because we're not going to play another scenario with them. We're each going to suffer two mental trauma. Ouch. Uh, that's because we're having the battle between truth and fiction. And then we can either decide to wake up, remain on the surface of the dreamlands, or venture into the underworld to find our companions. And I'd love to do that, but I don't think we can because we do not have dreamers know of another path in the campaign log. So I think we're just going to wake up. Resolution 3. You startle awake, riveted and dazed by the magnitude of the dream that held your attention for so long. And yet, when you try to recall any of it, you remember very little. It's all a haze, like a distant memory from decades ago. Just the hint of the dreams remain. A black castle, a ship sailing through space, a staircase, a black cat. You remember completing some profound quest, but for the life of you, you cannot remember what it is. In your campaign log, record Dreamers Awoke. If you're playing the, okay, that's not the four part. If you're playing the eight part, we're going to move to, to scenario 4B. Well, that was certainly an interesting quest. <laughs> Definitely not my favorite. I don't love having to dig through encounter cards to find specific ones. Uh, I did think that the idea of having to find one that had the specific tower and then you had to go there, that was really cool. But yeah, digging through this was so random. I mean, I got kind of lucky, really, to find them in there. Uh, yeah, and I also will say that uh, taking a year and a half away from this campaign and then coming back, I'm really hoping I have all the right keywords that I put into my campaign log. Uh, and I might have missed something, but it is what it is. I'm also really curious. There was a whole nother act, and we didn't even play that. I have no idea what would have happened. Uh, yeah, I guess that'll be for another time when I play this one. If you're still watching, first of all, thank you so much. Second of all, please remind me the next time I do a campaign like this to continue all the way through and not to stop and then come back to it a year and a half later because, yeah, that definitely has hurt me on making sure, especially this double campaign thing, I think is just um, ex ex exponentiated the difficulty with that. We have one more scenario. I am excited for it. Hopefully, I won't have messed something up where we missed a big climactic attack, but it is what it is if I did. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in that final scenario. I'll catch you at the next stop.